Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the MCD FNL Footy Show for another week. On location this week here at the Carisbrook Recreation Reserve, where right behind us, interleague training is happening in the lead up to this weekend's WorkSafe Community Championships. Huge show coming up today. Interleague coach Luke Tracy coming on later in the show, but guests coming left, right, and centre. Firstly, a man who's not a guest, a man who's here every week helping me out. On my far left today, Sammy Gow is our co host. Welcome, Sammy. G'day, Sean. Always happy to be here. Nice to be out here at Carisbrook under the lights. Yes, it is. It's very, very hospitable environment, so to speak. It is. They've looked after us. Our second special guest this week needs no introduction. This trophy right here, the cup that they're playing for this weekend in the WorkSafe Community Championships. We'll touch on that more shortly. But our third guest also needs no introduction, of course. Not the first time he's been on the footy show this year, but we've eagerly awaited his second return. And he's here right now, the operations manager of the MCDFNL, Jake Dunn. Dunny, welcome back, mate. Thanks, Shorty. Some Great. rave reviews after your last appearance. Better than the last operations manager was what I heard. May have been coming from your office, but all the same, it's still good banter. They weren't big shoes to fill, mate, so... <laughs> You said that, not me. Good afternoon to Scott Carey as well. Let's jump straight into it this week, boys, because before we start talking in a league, of course, some big talking points from the last weekend, and none bigger than the Mirabur Rovers finally breaking their season duck and getting on the board for the first time this year, Sammy, knocking over Molden at Princess Park on the weekend. Yeah, the uh, MCFL is only two winless sides, I think, uh, going head-to-head -head on the weekend, and Rovers getting the points. Uh, we know they've had lots of injuries this year, which has probably affected their campaign a little bit so far. So good to see them getting on the board. And as we've said in the past, Jack, a little bit unlucky not to be on the board at this stage. The game that we saw in round one, the season opener against Holbert, where they literally looked, they were they were in front when the siren sounded. Brandon McRedmond's shot a goal, sailed through after the siren to beat them. A little bit of luck, a little bit of injury, all going against them early on. But they, they're now, they can now have the week off this weekend knowing that they're on the board and that they're on the right track. Absolutely, Johnny. The pressure's off them to get, get the duck off their back, I suppose. Um, you know, we saw in that, that round one clash that they really have quite a lot of class across the board. So it probably looks for them to pick up a few wins uh, later in the season and really build towards potentially a finals campaign. And playing some kids as well, Sammy. Good to see some youth coming up through the ranks, of course, from the Maribor area with the Rovers this year. Yeah, Rovers said uh, before the season started, Sean, that they'd gone out purposely to recruit uh, 18 to 22 year olds with the player point system coming in. Yep. And maybe a salary cap next season. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's their plan and uh, it's paid off for them on the weekend finally. So, well done to Ross Andrews and everybody down at the Rovers for getting that first win on the board. And unfortunately for Molden, that leaves them the only winless team in the MCDFNL at the interleague break. Talking point number two, it would be remiss of us not to talk about the hometown team here at Carisbrook who are absolutely flying at the moment. As we know, Jake, struggled early on in the season, came up against a couple of good teams and had their colours lowered, but now back on a roll and getting some key players back in the teams that are starting to really perform in recent weeks. Yeah, absolutely. I suppose earlier in the year they uh, were fixtured against two really strong teams off the back of a, a strong couple of years in the competition, Yep. Uh, coming up against Navarre and, and Royal Park as well. So... They're really starting to find some form. They've got some firepower up forward who are uh, starting to hit their straps and they'll look to press uh, yeah, pr press up the ladder towards the end of the season as well. And, Sammy, it's been interesting to see their team in the last couple of weeks since they've started hitting form. Luke Tracy on fire in front of goals, who we'll speak to later on, the interleague coach. Joel Risk back in the side kicking goals. Liam Cunningham played his second game on the weekend, kicked four goals as well, starting to approach that form that made him so irrepressible in 2014. Colrock Scholl is back into the side after some injury early on, also playing very good footy. They're starting to get the band back together. And as we know, Corey Taylor has been kicking goals in recent weeks as well. Your man. Yeah, uh, first two weeks of the season, Sean, people started to question, you know, are Carisbrook going to be as good as they have been previous years? I think we saw on the weekend that, yes, they are. They had some key players out early on in the season. Those players you just listed off are all big-name players mm. for Carisbrook. And we saw the results of them uh, getting back in the side on the weekend. Here's one player that I'm a little bit concerned about at the moment. Our man, Big Nate, just not quite pulling the finger out. Heard a whisper that he's a little bit not quite there in the head at the moment. Was seen sneaking off for some tea and scones with the missus a couple of weeks ago on a Sunday afternoon, just not quite on there, eating Magnum Egos on the way to training these days as well. Just he's not, the, the body's not a temple anymore for the big man and he's being ruled by the missus. Yeah, I think he's just resting on his laurels, uh, just going back on old achievements. He needs to lift his game. He doesn't have many recent laurels to rest on, so you need to lift your game to the rest of what your team is doing, Nathan Wright, because Carisbrook are on the way to doing something special. Carisbrook trains humming and he's in danger of being left off it if he's not careful. 
Talking point number three for this week, of course, the WorkSafe Community Championships. The MCDFL playing the Horsham District Football Netball League at Princess Park on Saturday, Jake. And it's going to be a fairly big day as well. We'll see on the, we'll talk on the MCDFL Netball Show later this week about the netball side of things. But from the footy point of things, a pretty big day. Starting pretty early at Princess Park too. Yeah, starting nice and early with the under-16s at um, 9.55. So it's a really good showcase of our, our junior talent. Um, and then we obviously build into the under-18s and the seniors later in the day. So it'll be a, a really big day for footy and also for netball and, and a really important day for the Maribyrnong Castle Main uh, District Football Netball League as well, Sean. Obviously, your first year involved in this interleague preparation in the league. How have you found it personally, getting around all the behind-the-scenes stuff and everything like that, which we both know that there's a heck of a lot of work that goes into putting this team on the paddock on Saturday. How have you found the lead-up? Has it been a little bit busier than what you've expected? Oh, it's, it's been quite busy, yes, but I've been fortunate to have quite a lot of help as well from uh, our executive who have been tremendous, Brody and Kayleen and Deb and, and the likes have been yep. fantastic for me and um, also everyone in the office has really helped me as well. So whilst it has been busy, uh, it's certainly been manageable and it's something that I'm looking forward to, uh, you know, really sitting back on Saturday and enjoying uh, I suppose a lot of the hard work. Yeah, now Sammy, you've had a look at the boys on the track tonight, you've had a look at the squad that has been put together, the final squad obviously that we're looking at towards Saturday. You're one of the form experts in this game, mate, how's this team looking as it runs out on the field? You'll find a little bit more uh, out about the team, I suppose, from Luke Tracy later when he mm. speaks to him, but just having a look at the boys out there training now and it's a pretty big body inside, Sean. Uh, I think LT is looking to maybe combat some of the bigger bodies in the Horsham side come the weekend. So it'll be interesting to see how the two teams line up. Where do you see the strength of the team on, as you see it on paper at the moment? Uh, early in the season, I think we've seen a lot of uh, big hauls of goals kicked by Fords. We know we've got the Driscoll brothers out there, Cody and Ash. Yep. Uh, a couple of other blokes in form in front of goal as well. So I think the forward line's where it's at for the MCD for now. X factor for this week. I'm, I'll, I'll go with the three of you. I'm going to start it off, and I'm going to say Jack O'Bowen, who, of course, hasn't been involved in the MCDFL last year, comes back into the league this year, off a major league preparation, off going through a training period with the Ballarat Footy League interleague team last year, and of course, off training with the North Ballarat Roosters. He's probably aching for this game and getting that little bit of better standard, and I reckon he'll lift to the occasion and really give the on balls an armchair ride. Right. Jake, who do you see as your X factor going into this one? Um, I'm looking at Richard Zelenchich this week, Shawnee, and yep. I'm, I'm thinking uh, a, a bloke who's come out here from the Ballarat Football League um, and he's quite a fit young young fellow who will play a role across the half-back line and yep. really should excel at a level where his speed and fitness is going to be required. I think Richie, Richie Z is the man to get the job done for us this weekend. Yes, Gowers? Uh, Cody Driscoll for me, Sean. Been uh, the form forward of the competition so far this season. Big yep. game player, and I think he'll rise to the occasion come Saturday. Yeah, very interested to see the Navarre boys in this one again that have just... 46 games in a row and counting at the moment that they've won and just kind of looking to stretch the legs and I suppose it's a bit harsh to say but probably looking for a bit of competition as well. We know Daniel Parkin always shines at this kind of game. Very much looking forward to seeing the Driscoll boys go around obviously. Danny Grellett who you spoke about a couple of weeks ago but very much looking for this game and Lockie Slorick one of the young kids in the Navarre side that gets his chance at the interleague level this year. Yeah you see uh, 46 games in a in the row, Sean, so you can see why Navarre has such a strong representation in this side. Talk to us about the boys you know fairly well as well, the Natty boys, Lockie Cameron, the big source, getting up and about. Tom Douglas back into the league and has really shown some signs and really deserves his spot, and Jared Bateson coming in an assistant coaching role this year. Yeah, Bato's taken the reins out at Natty uh, this year for his first year as coach. Uh, like you said, assistant coach this year in interleague. Good bit of outside run. Uh, Tommy Douglas, dangerous through the midfield and in front of goal. And Lockie Cameron in the ruck and also up forward, he's been kicking a few goals this season. And of course, Daniel Vidala as well, making his interleague debut for the MCDFNL from Natty this weekend too. Yeah, another uh, one of those big body midfielders that we spoke about, and I'm sure Luke Tracy will uh, look for him to put the heat on the Horsham midfielders come Saturday. Well, it's enough of us dribbling on and talking about stuff that we might not know a lot about. I think we need to bring someone in that knows more about the structure of this interleague program and this team, being the interleague coach, Luke Tracy. So... Dunny, you can shove off for now, mate. Thank you very much for your contributions today. You've helped make this footy show great. Congratulations. Thank you, Shawnee. We're well, going to happy to be here, mate. Happy to have you here, as always, Jake. And we're going to bring in now the coach of the MCD FNL's interleague team, Luke Trace, to give us more of an insight on what's going to happen on Princess Park come 2.30 this Saturday. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Joining us for this special interleague segment is the coach 
of the Epsid FNL Senior Interleague team, Luke Tracy. Luke, welcome to the Footy Show, mate. Great having you on board. Sean, Sammy, thanks. Good to be here. Pretty big week as well, mate, obviously, with the Interleague game being played this weekend. Tell us about the build-up to this year, obviously, from naming your squad through to right now on the eve of the, of the game. Yeah, it's been good. It's been an enjoyable build-up, and we've had good support from the league and the, and the club, so that's been really pleasing. I guess initially I spoke to all the coaches at length and, and found out how their pre-seasons and their squads were shaping up, and, mm -hmm. and then from there we, we had a bit of a short list of players that were, that were um, recommended, and then we found a, a squad that's now uh, ready to train in the in game week, so it's been good. And I suppose between naming the squad and obviously now going into the game, you've probably whittled a few down. Are you happy with the composition of what you've got from a structure point of view? Yeah, we are. Yes, yes. It's it's a good lineup, and I think it's well balanced, and that's what you have to take into to win the league or to rep footy. Yep. Uh, we're, we're well balanced across the board as a league. I don't think we haven't got a lot of really big guys, so we have to pick versatile, mobile players, mm -hmm. and we think as a back six and, and forward six, that's what we've got, and we've got some good strong body midfielders as well that, that can do the job for us. Yep, good to see blokes throwing footies at us as well beyond us, good thing there's some glass between us. Speaking of the main kind of squads, LT, uh, what about the, your opposition come Saturday? Do you know much about them? Is there anyone you're going to be having a look at in particular? Yeah, well, been lucky enough that, that Wayne Driscoll, as a past interleague coach uh, with Mirabara Castlemaine, uh, is is based or knows quite a bit about the Horsham District Footy League. So he's been involved in some opposition analysis, I guess. Um, and so it's really great to pick his brain on interleague footy and then also on, on the opposition we will face. So I think we've got to get the balance right between making sure we get everything right on our end, um, but also I think you've got to pay the opposition some respect, certainly, and, and try and um, match up on a few of their good players and at least know what sort of forward line they'll bring so your back six can have the right composition and, and all of that. It's obviously now your second year in charge of the interleague team. What do you think you've done differently this year to help you prepare that you might not have done last year or that you learned from last year and thought, that's something I probably need to do going forward? Yeah, well, I guess being appointed again earlier gave us time to, to, to prepare and that enabled us to have some good conversations with the clubs and, and being, I, I'm not sure the interleague weekend can change, so you've just got to work best with a short time frame. Yep. Uh, and, and we felt the trust of the coaches was paramount, that, that they need to be part of the selection com uh, committee, if you like, in that we, we'd ask them who's playing well, but then they saw, they see the opposition clubs and they can give you a really honest opinion on who they think is playing well for those teams. So yep. we've tried to have real buy-in across the league, uh, and, and I guess we've tried to... Um, I guess get going a bit earlier and make sure we can gel as a unit and, and learn from last year. I think probably we look back in the first quarter we played club level footy uh, and the start of that second quarter and, and they put us away early and so yeah. this year we want to hit the ground running and that's a couple of things we've learned from the start. Yes, yeah. Now talk to us about your assistant coach because as everyone knows, you can't do a job like this on your own and also you've had some help from the Major League Club in town as well. Shane Scontra, the coach of the Merrimara Borough Magpies and a past interleague coach with the Ballarat Footy League as well, helping out with some preparation. Yeah, it's fantastic. Uh, I'm a big believer with football that it's it's coaching panels and, and certainly the more help and quality help you can have, the, the better you're likely to be and, and more chance of winning. So we're wrapped to have uh, Clayton Scoble, Daniel Park and have been involved again. But yeah, but who have been around for a couple of years yes, now and yeah. know not just your coaching style but how to coach in league footy. Yeah, Matty Smith's part of that group. Uh, we added, added Jared, Jared Bateson, who's a, a nice fella. Um, and he's been involved in, in, in some of that also. And then yep. I guess the, the one you alluded to was Shane Scontra and, and having coached the Ballarat Footy League in the league side for the past two years, he, he brings great experience and, and uh, he's a quality person. That's the first thing I noticed when, mm. I, when I met. There's uh, no doubt about that. Met Shane and, and so it's fantastic. He's giving up his time. He's coaching Mirabara uh, and, and I guess initially it, it raised eyebrows that, that we could work together, but mm. we all said, why not? And, and someone with his experience and, and knowledge of football and, and rep footy, uh, he's been a great asset and, and we've enjoyed it. Uh, speaking of things that might give you an advantage come Saturday, LT, back on, I suppose, the MCDFNL's home ground, Princess Park, do you think that, that plays into your hands? Well, I think it does. Horsham have got to spend a couple of hours in, in the bus and, and travel and that's always a difficult thing and, and, and we, we play local, we know our ground well and, and Princess Park is... I guess it's not a big ground uh, for in, in terms of length, so if you can defend it well, I think that gives you a really good chance. And, and whilst we lost last year's game, we played a really strong opposition, which I think we've since found out. And, and, um, and so we can take a lot of positives out of that, that, that we did do some things quite well there. So I guess the other thing is that all of us play footy on this ground, and, and certainly finals footy, so Navarre being represented by seven players in our, in our side yep. come Saturday. Um, 
they're playing really good finals footy on it. They know how to defend it, and, and hopefully that's an advantage to us. And I suppose on that note, do you think it's also beneficial that the Rovers have had some games on Princess Park this year and some other players have had home and away games this year on Princess Park too? Yeah, it's a great thing because it's the town's best facility and, and it's fantastic that um, we're all able to cycle through it and, and play as much football as the ground can cope with, I think. Well, Luke, we're very much looking forward to seeing what your team can do on Princess Park this Saturday and hopefully bring home that cup that we saw earlier for the Maribyrnong Castle Main District Football and Netball League. All the very best of luck on Saturday, mate. We're all looking forward to seeing how the team goes. Yeah, thanks. We, we appreciate the support from all the clubs and, and the people within the community. So uh, get, get out and support all the, the, the boys and girls with their football and netball on Saturday. Make thanks. sure you get down Princess Park. Come early because it's a big, big day of football and netball, as we explained earlier in the show. That's all the time we've got for the MCDFNL Footy Show this week. Thanks once again to the Bendigo Bank in Maryborough for their fantastic support of the Footy Show once again this year. LT, thanks for joining us again, mate. Thanks, boys. And Sammy, pleasure's always mine, as always, mate. Thanks, mate. Big weekend coming up. Very Huge exciting. weekend coming up. Very much looking forward to seeing it. And don't forget, next week we will have all of the wash-up and all of the talking points from the WorkSafe Community Championships fixture this weekend. We're going to go. We're going to go and get ready for a big weekend. So thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week.